נפתח, סכס בוב מציע, סכס בוב מציע, דף בוב עמוד א', דף בוב עמוד א', and, and, actually, uh, grab the talis. Yeah, we are again in Masech Zbov Metziah, Daf Vov, Amud Aleph, towards the bottom of the page. What happens if the person, one of them, took the talis before the, um, yeah, before, uh, in front of Beisdin? He grabbed it, what's going to be now? Um, sorry about the Zoom uh, glitch. So says the Gemara, "Loi hoche b'mayaskinan yer l'alain b'fonenu loi hoche b'mayaskinan." Kegoin. The story is as follows. Says the Gemara. The also question is as follows: What would be if the two people were fighting in Beis Din? They're arguing. Each one says, "Shalai kulo shalai kulo shalai." Before they're supposed to take a shvua, then what do we say? Okay, I'm sorry about that. I really hope now it's matzliach. Okay, yeah, okay, um, fine, for the third time, okay, if, it, if the guy kept quiet, then what, if he kept quiet, he shows that, that he's moida, that he agrees to the other guy, if he screamed right away, and he says, you're gonna, you brutal maneuver, it's mine, then of course what, of course, we bring it back to the matzev of both of them holding it, they should take sure like human beings, don't behave like an animal. The question was, what happens if at the beginning it kept quiet, and later, later on, the question is how late is another discussion, but first of all, it was quiet, then later on, he started protesting. The question is how do we interpret that behavior, right? And do we say that the person that caught it keeps it or doesn't keep it? Now, um, okay, the Gemara then says, again, again for the third time, um, the both of them came the both held it together and we brought before a case of remember what was the the the, the Rav Nachman statement Rav Nachman made the statement that said what if one of them is holding it and the other one is not the one who's not holding it is of course what's the Hiddish if one of them holds it, the other one doesn't, that's Kitadalit stuff. Of course we know that's Motsum Chaveroi. Must be, but the Tfisol Atarvayu, must be of Nachman's case, comes to prove our question, comes to answer our question. Tfisol Atarvayu, both of them hold it together, yeah? Tfisol Atarvayu, both hold it. Vamrina Lu, Zilu Ploigu, we tell them, go out and plig it, divide it, swear and split, then they went out. Then they went out. They went out. They went out of based in. And we say, okay, happily ever after, they're going to have the split talis, the hadar also. Then they came back to based in. Oh, oh, you again? I thought we we're overdone with you. It's not over till it's over. They came back. They came back while one is holding it and the other doesn't. Hmm. In other words, the very same Reuben and Shimon who did the swear and split business before, they come back, the return of the litigants. One of them is now holding it and the other one is not. So then what's the Chiddush? Well, obviously, if they don't say anything, right? What's the question? Again, we don't have to go back to Cheder. Elamai, the story is as follows. Hi, Omar, Oduye Oidili. One of them says, he admitted, Outside based in, you know, he felt bad admitting in front of the three rabbis, you know, you want to look good in the eyes of the rabbi. But outside based in, says Mr. Current Holder, the other guy admitted to me that it's really mine. That's his version. The high Omar, the other guy says, the one not holding it says, Bidomi agati niale. I really gave it to him for money. I rented it out to him for money. Because he wants the tally so much, he wants his beautiful scarf to wear it. I gave it to him as on a rental, rent a scarf, rent a talis. That's what I did to him. And that's why he's holding my talis rented by him. No, so now it's not a simple Kita Dalit case. There is a case here. There, is, there are two valuable, valid claims over here. However, says Rav Nachman, 
says, Lord Nachman, no, we still say Moitzim Chalvar Raya. The one who does not hold it has the, how would I say, the lower hand. He, has, he doesn't have the upper hand. The Amrin and Lay would tell the one not holding, Ad hash to Chashadet Lay Begazlan. Up until now, you screamed your head off, Chashadet Lay Begazlan. You suspected him to be a thief, right? You claimed the other guy is a thief. The hash to Mugot Lay Beloy Sahadi. And now all of a sudden, you are now, you gave it to him, you rented it out to him without Adim. Where the Adim? All of a sudden became so trustworthy. All of a sudden, he's so, you're so trusting of him. How come? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. And that's a chiddush. We say motzim chaver lovaraya. However, however, bear in mind that our question wasn't yet answered. Our question wasn't yet answered. Don't let the Gemara, you know, take you to other places tangentially. Our question was, what would happen if in based in? I'm repeating the question, which will accompany us throughout the sugya. What happens if two people are fighting? Then one of them grabbed it, right? And the other one is being funny with his reaction. He reacts, but a little bit too late. Do we say that now the other one is a Motsim Chaveroi, or do we say, no, 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 go back to the to the court game, to the to the to the court and 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 hold it with the other person, and you both have to be Nishma. That question wasn't answered. The boy Seima, another alternative answer to the explanation of Rav Nachman. What was Rav Nachman's statement? If one is holding, the other one not holding, and our question was, that's nice nostalgia, you know? We all know that from many, many Mishnais, right? It's in Bava Basa Kufnun Gimel, it's in the Mishnah in Bava Kamem and Vov, many places. Why do you and the Moira of Nachman have to tell me in such a clear case? One answer we said, what? It wasn't so clear, right? He says, I rented it out to him. Another way to explain Rav Nachman's statement and make the statement not so simple, like we learned before, what do you mean like we learned before? The Asul Akamon, same cases in the Mishnah, two people come to Beisdin, they're barging into Beisdin, holding the talis dramatically. However, oh, there's a tweak, there's a variation here. One of them holds it properly. He holds the actual body of the talis. You know, you call these things at the end fringes or pestles, pestles, right? Pestles. It's one of the words I know from you know, someone. Yeah. So then, okay. So one of them holds the actual talis. He grabs it nicely. The idach, the other one, masrach basruchi. The other one is holding less, significantly less strongly. He only holds the tassels at the end. Or by the way, at the end, the Gemara will say they both hold the tassels. But this scenario is one of them holds it in a much stronger way. The other one is like tagging along, like a little misken, like a little uh, uh, shefele. He holds it and he holds just the corner, the tassel. He holds something less clearly, less muhzak, less strong of a chazoko. And then what's the chiddush? Oh, now we say, that chazoko that is clearly not as strong physically and halachically is considered to be nothing. And we say, one of them is holding it, the other one is like tagging along, holding, you know, like the end tail of the end tzitzis, you know, of the tzitzis of the talis, while the other one is holding most of the azoi. So then we say, you, Mr. Holder, it looks very much like you're like, you know, tagging along, like you're taking a ride on the bandwagon, and therefore you're considered to be a moitzi. You're a moitzi. It's as if you're not holding it. you consider considered to be the moitzi. You have to bring a proof of adim, and the one holding it, as long as you don't have adim, he is on the right side. Now, what's the Chiddush here? Oh, now we're involving Sumchus. Continues the Gemara, continues the Gemara, and says, sumchus, even according to Sumchus, the Omar, Momen, Mutal, Bastofik, Cholkin, Beloy, Shvua, I'll, I'll explain everything. But Sumchus, remember Sumchus? He says, a case of Momen, Mutal, Bastofik, a case of Momen, which is Mutal, Bastofik, there's a case about the Momen money, which we don't know who owes who, such as in the case of, remember who? Shor Shenogu Chesaporo, where there is a real, remember the words, Dro de Mamoino. There's a real, real Sophic here. I know that the bull gored, there's blood on his, uh, on his things, on his uh, horns, and the cow for sure died because of him. Next to the cow is what? Oh, they, they, what a terrible abortion. Oh, illegal. Yeah, <laughs> what did he do? The Shor gored the cow, 
We don't know if he gored the baby, it didn't gore the baby, but it's a real, real soft because something happened here, right? And then Shosh Nagoch Zapar says to him, they split. In other words, let's say it's a short time. He has to pay half of the calf. He has to now pay how much? A quarter. He has to pay half. In other words, go half, half, pay half. That's what Sumchus said. Why? Sumchus says, I'm also a of Raya. Who's holding the money? The value of the of the calf, the, the shore owner, the mazik owner, the damager. Says Sumchus, I don't care about Motsam of Raya in this case, because we still have a very good suffix. Statistically speaking, it's a 50 50. The fact that the money happens to be in the pocket of Mr. Shore owner doesn't faze me, says Sumchus. He argues in Chokomim, yeah? So now, oh, now Sumchus is the bigger Chidish here. Even according to Sumchus, it says, Maman Mutal Besofek, in the case of Shorshan Gechasapar, there's a real case here, and they split without Shvua. That was remembered Sumchus earlier on, with this without Shvua, Moidu Sumchus, the Sirchalab Klumhi. Wow. Says Sumchus, in this case, holding Sircha, Leisarech, like in modern Hebrew, also Leisarech is like to tag along. Like you see someone walking, and there's like somebody walking behind him unwillingly, like a little kid following the father. To, to school or to the dentist, you know, like he's like misterech, it's called in Hebrew, like he's tagging along. You see that his chazok is not as strong. Even Sumchus, who doesn't believe in a Moetzim Echerbal of Raya as much, right? One would argue, that, that's Pshat and Igmar, one would argue maybe holding the little te- tassel at the end, it's true that it's not real chazoko, but maybe it's good enough to create a sofik. Just like over there, B'Shor Shonogu Chesaporo, there's a real question here, who gored who? I mean, did he gore or not, the baby? And then Sumchus says, in the case of real Sofek, I split without Shvua. Maybe here too, Sumchus would say to split, because maybe holding the tassel, although it's not Chazoko, Sumchus doesn't care so much about Chazoko. Maybe it's still considered a valid uh, real Sofek. Says the Gemara, no. Moide Sumchus de Sircha lav klumi. Listen to the words. Sircha is nothing. What do you mean nothing? Not only it's not chazoko, it's not even called a real sofik. Look at Rashi, if you can, the sirchalab klumi, the a few lines from the bottom, en shor shochut lefonecho. Shor shochut, we don't have a, a slaughtered shore in front of us, meaning we don't have a real sofik. When it's shor shor I wake up in the morning, I see a tragedy took place, the shore is going crazy, he gored, I don't know if he gored the baby or not, but that's a real sofik, it's real 50-50. There's a dead baby, how? A real shore goring. What happened? Here, the fact that he's holding it uh, like this is so nothing, it did not even create a valid suffix for Sumchus to tell me they should split. So both Sumchus and Rabbi, even Sumchus, everybody agrees in this case, even Sumchus, because your little tiny chazako is not something, it's nothing. Therefore, you are like a non-holder, and therefore you should just, what? Bring Adim. Your only solution is to be Mertzum Chol of Raya, bring Adim to the story, and get it out of the other person's Hazoko. That's the Chiddush so far. Now, the first wide line, we have a whole new old topic. Um, somebody who, whose possession is in somebody else's hand would try and wrestle it back from him. If, if it is the... If... Fine. Oh, now the Gemara develops the question. Develops the same question as the before. I'm not sure if to go into the long this now. I'll continue reading a little bit and then we'll go a little bit deeper. It says the Gemara like this at the end of the first wide line. Imtim tok befanenu Yeah. Let's say, let's now go. Remember the suffix? We have a suffix. What's a suffix? We have a suffix, a question. One guy, Reuven, grabbed the whole thing. Shimon's reaction is questionable. So leave Shimon's reaction in the side for now. Do we say, Reuven, what an animal, what are you? Hema, give it back to Shimon's half and we'll continue the court case as it is, right? Or do we say, no, in Mutsino Semiodo, the other side is to say, no, we won't take it out of his hands. Why not? Because we believe in a Motsim Chabrela of Araya. And as we interpret the Shtika and Khnami like you, he kept quiet for too long and that shows this guy's right. If he wants to prove himself right, the one who's not holding it, and he thinks the other guy is a barbarian, take it out of the hands of the barbarian with Adim. We play the game of a Moetzim Echevel Raya both ways. Now he's the one holding it. You want to prove otherwise? Take it from him. And we don't take it out of his hands. Continues the Gemara. Im tim tzeloimar, tok for echad b'fenenu. Tok for means he, he grabbed it, he attacked it, he grabbed it in front of us. 
if we say really that you do take it out of his hands and bring it back into the into the ball game, and now they both have to be niched by everything. Let's say means what? Oh, let me not explain the lumbus. Let me no. Before we continue, we have to explain the lumbus here. No, don't continue the Gemara now. Now uh, listen to me. There's a lumbus Shakira over here like this. When we say that the person, yeah, I'll, I'll give you an example, and that's that. That will be the example that should uh, follow. Will be with us all the time. Let's say that I go shalom, I grab uh, these pen. You have a nice pen over there. I grab it in front of everyone brutally, so everyone will stop going to Mashir. That's first. And secondly, you'll all tell me, Akiva, you're you're gonna give it back to me, right? What do you mean? Which means I have no rights whatsoever in Tzvi's pen, right? However, Louis Tzvi are there. You up to fine. Let's say, nice. let's say, give it to British. Let's say that Tzvi and I have a very old. Uh, Rao, we have a very old fight about a pen, yeah? Let's say I brought Adim, and he brought Adim, I said the pen is mine, you said the pen is yours, and I have Migo, and you have Migo, and you have Chazotas, and whatever, yeah? But it ha happens to be by you, yeah? But we, it's very well known fact here by everybody, let's say that me and I have a dispute over the pen, yeah? But, and I do have a lot of rice, and he has a lot of rice, we've been dragging each other to courts for 20 years for that one pen. So let's say, if I grab the pen from Tzvi, are you sure I'm a thief? No, maybe, but I, I, I just yeah, can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. It's what? Oh, oh, in other yeah, words. Uh, yeah, maybe. No, no, it's the pen. It's the pen. <laughs> One second. What I'm trying to say is as follows. What I'm trying to say is like this. When there is, a, when there is an object which is being fought about, fought over, yeah? If we say that if I take the pen, it's mine, and we'll say, not mine, mine. It's a Moetzim HaKarbal of Araya. I'm basically changing the, the order of things. Instead of me being Motorch of Araya, and I have a lot of good Rayas, but not enough, I'll grab it from you. Now you be the Motorch of Araya. It's really the same question. We just turned the table. You now bring me Adim and lawyers and turn Raboni. Let's say. Oh, but it does. It's something I'm a thief. Now go deeper, go deeper, go deeper, go deeper. If Zvi has a pen in his pocket and I have a 50% sad that it is mine, yeah? And let's say, I'm saying not like the Gorna on purpose, on purpose. Let's say Allah would be, hmm, once I grabbed it, oh, now you have to bring your eye up, <laughs> and I'll go home. That shows that even while it's in, the, in his pocket, I have, listen to this, potential semi bilis over the pen. If we say that if, if I take the pen from Tzvi, then it will be mine until you prove otherwise, even before I took it, I already have some kind of potential shaykhs to it. And nobody else in the room has connection to Tzvi's pen. But if I have a valid Tzviya, for example, I had Chazoko, right? And then if I take it from him, it will be again mine until proven otherwise. Even before I grabbed it, you can say that I have some kind of potential shaykh is called Zika. I have connection to the pen more than other people. And that we're going to see in Amud Beis. So that's just a Hakdoma. Now says the Gemara the other side. Just remember the concept and later we'll apply it. Continues the Gemara. Let's say it's the other way around. Let's say it's two people fight over the talis, and if one of them grabs it, we'll take it out of his hand, which means he does not have real rights over here. Let's say to the Hekdesh. Ay, ay, ay. The guy's a Froom guy, very smart. He's using religion for his side. You know what he does? He says the whole Tali said Hekdesh. Ah. You know what he does? We're fighting Ruven Shimon, fighting. Uh -huh. It's Hekdesh. <sighs> what do you mean Hekdesh? We all know that Hekdesh, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to pull. You don't have to do Agba. When I say sons, if I say my phone is Hekdesh, it automatically becomes belonging to Beis Hekdesh. The guy wants to verbally, halachically snatch it from the other guy verbally, but saying it's Hekdesh. The whole thing is Hekdesh. Well, the answer is Enem Kudeshes. Why? Just like, because you have no potential bylaws. We are now saying that had I grabbed it, it would not be mine. Basin would say, you bad boy, brutal, don't take the law into your hands. Give it back to the other guy and you keep, you know, keep the shvu and the legal process. Means right now I have zero ownership in it. If I have zero, no, I mean, I have over the half. I have zero ownership over the other half. That I can't be matched the entire thing. Why? Because if you he can't do, I have no ownership over the other half. I can't be matched something that's not mine. It's not a good way to snatch it out of his hands. 
soon you'll see the Chiddush. You may be wondering what's a Chiddush. If it's not mine, I can't be Magdish. I cannot be Magdish Ellen's watch. Nice watch. I can't be Magdish Ellen's watch. It says what? Each Kiyakdish is Beisoy. Ma Beisoy Bil Shusoy, Kol Bil Shusoy. Yeah, I can't say your watch is Hekdish. I'm not the owner. So if I only hold it to my half, the other half is not even potentially mine, because even if I grab it, Beisoy will say, hey, go back. Give it back to him. Or, then what? I have no Bechlal Shachas whatsoever on the other half, right? Of course, it can't be Makdish. You may think it's not even a Chiddush. Now you're going to get the Chiddush. However, however, in Tim Tziloi Motok Ferechad Befanenu, Ein, please underline with red pen, Ein Motzin Oisom Yodoi. Let's say it's what I told you before. Let's say the halacha would be that if Reuven grabs the whole thing, then Bezin say, ah, you know what? Eh, Amoitz Mechavala Baraya works both ways. Now it's Reuven's, or it's held by Reuven. Now, Shim is the one who'll have to bring a raya. What does that mean, my good friend? I saved you a lot of work before. Now you understand, because if Reuven will take it, it will be his until known otherwise, even before he took it, it's potentially his. It's potentially his, both Reuven and Shim. So whoever now comes and listen to the continuation, Hekdisha, Beloy Tokfo, Mahu, let's say instead of grabbing it, I could have grabbed it, it would have been mine. I'm not a brutal guy, I'm a nice coiled guy, I'm so idle, I'm such a tzaddik. Instead of brutally taking it, you know what I do? I say, it's Hekdesh. <laughs> the whole talis is Hekdesh, I say. Does Hekdesh apply or doesn't it apply? It's not so simple. No, Yosef, it's not so simple. You think no, and you have a point. Not so simple. Kevin the Omar Mal, it says, Mal says, anonymous Amoira says, Ami rosa le gavoya, ki misirosa le hediot dami. What do you need to do in order to physically, in order to be makdish something to base on mikdash? You know what? Zero. You gotta talk. Amira to gavoa is like mesira giving over to a hediot. If I want to sell you my phone, how do I do it? Shicha, hagba, something. Yeah, shka, not shka, whatever. Yeah, things. Yeah, kinyonim. But hekdash, nothing. Nothing physical. I say this is hekdash. The words have their magic. Like kiddush isha. We have to be a woman besides the ring, the, the words, the Kodeshisli, right? So now, oh, if words of he- for Hegdish are like a physical action by people that they're the equivalent, command the talk for Dami. It's as if he grabbed it. If grabbing helps, then spiritual verbal grabbing called Hegdish should also help. Ah, you may claim it's not mine. But I just told you, potentially it is mine that potential already now can actually be actualized by doing Hekdesh. That's the longest over here. This sugya is not hard. It just has a lot of depth in it. Yeah? That's one side. Oy Dilma, or maybe. Hashtamiya, now at least, as of now, Eloi Tokfo, he didn't yet physically grab it, and it's not yet his. Vixiv, it says in the Torah, the each Kiyakdish is based Koidish. It says a man, if a man is Makdish's house, it's holy. Ma beiso bil shusoy, af kol bil shusoy, right? Bovekama, daf samiches, samichtes, yeah? Just like my house is under my possession, my control, so too, anything that's under me, that's mine, I can be makdish. La kuki hai, excluding this, the loy bil shusoy, which is not in his reshus. Get it? Get what I'm saying? Oh, in other words, Yosef, you're right on that side. That, the other side says no. That potential shmotential, you know, it's like, you know, the teacher says about uh, your worst kid in school, he has a lot of potential. So you know your kid is not doing so good in school, so well, he has a lot of potential in math. You know, I think they said that I have potential in math when I was in Kita Aleph, yeah? In other words, potential, shkoyach, potential. Right now, Lamaisa, he didn't grab it, right? If he grabs it, we'll talk, but he didn't. So Hekdish cannot apply, yeah? That level of potentialism is not strong enough to make me the bailing now to do Hekdesh? That's a question. Very nice. Do we say that that potential, if I just, you know, work a little bit more in the gym and I grab it from him, it will be mine, which means potentially it's mine. Is that potential good enough to be Makdish or not good enough to be Makdish? That's a Shaila. And if it is good enough to be Makdish, then I can do something very elegant. I can just be Makdish and the whole house will be Hekdesh and out of his hands. I will not have it either. That's what Chimshan and Gibber said. What did Chimshan say? They will die and I'll die with them. People do that in court all the time, right? I will, as long as the other one loses, I will also lose. It's a good morning, also. That's a question. That's not a chiddush. Of course, can be makdish that. 
Of course, you can knock this at least half. Avada, you're right. You're right, but that, that's not, not a chiddush. You, you're too right. <laughs> the question is, can we knock this the whole thing? Because potentially, if I grab the whole thing, it may be mine, yes, or at least my tzumachavar for the other side, is that good enough for me to be makdish? That's a shayla. Toshma, good? Yes. Uh, you were one second before, yeah. Okay. Weiter. Toshma, dahi, Toshma, come and listen to this attempt for Raya. Dahi Masusa, we're trying to prove our point. There was once a Masusa that's not a Masus. Masusa is a bathhouse, best mechatz. Two people were fighting over it. They're not holding it. Yeah, the mechatz was somewhere in the ground. It was like a swimming pool. Yeah. And what happened to that swimming pool? Stop the fight. Two people, each one. Hi, Omar. Did you? One guy, his name is, I don't know, says it's mine. Hi, Omar. Did you? The other one said it's mine. Okay. All very nice. Same question is here. What happened next? Kam chad minayu One of them came and was makdishit. One of them came. And he said the entire bath house is Hekdesh, Kodesh Lashem, Kodesh to Besamikdash, belong to Besamikdash, the, the Merchatz is worth, I don't know, half a million shekel, half a million shekel to Besamikdash, and goodbye. That's what he says. The question is <laughs> the same question as we had all the time. Is that a valid Hekdesh because of his potential ability to grab the whole uh, Merchatz? Let's say he charges and he, he brings all his friends to the pool and they hold over the pool and they lock the door. Would that work? Maybe. And if yes, is the Hekdush also a potentially good thing? And can you be Makdush the whole thing? I don't know. What happened next was Rab Hanani, Rab Oishia, and all the other rabbis, the old Parshimina, they stopped going to that bathhouse. Why? <laughs> if the bathhouse is Hekdush, we regular mortals are not allowed to use it, right? You're not allowed to take benefit and enjoy Hano from a base Mechat. They all stopped going to that pool. To that merchatz. Now, oh, you may say that proves what? That the Hekdesh works. No. No, 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 no. Let me tell you now to avoid confusion. They were obviously very Yerushalayim. And so. therefore, they said, just in case, because we're saying it later, to be extra safe, they said, it's a Shaila. Yeah? Would you eat something which is Suffolk, uh, <laughs> cheeseburger Suffolk nut? I don't think so. It's a Suffolk. It's a big Suffolk. So that's why they stayed away as a state in the Pasuk, in case of doubt, do without. Yeah, so that's what they did. But they still had the question is it really Hekdash or not? They wanted to resolve the issue. They need to go to the Merchatz. The Omelar of Oishia, one of the people in the store of Oishia, Rabba, he told Rabba, he also has come of Chizda le Kafri. When you go to Rav Chizda to the town called Kapri, Boy Minei ask him the question of what? What's the question? When two people fight, and let's assume that one of them would grab it and will become the current holder legally, then does heck this apply? Or doesn't it apply? The same question we have all along. We want to know if we, if we can go to the bathhouse. Heck, then, most people did not have a shower at home. It was a necessary thing. The bathhouse was like you take a shower in the summer every day. So ask him the question, please. Ask Rav Chiz, the God of Lador, ask him. He also is Sura. On his way to Capri, he actually went, he had a sojourn, he had a stopover in Sura. And he spoke to Rav Imnuna. Instead of Rav Chizda, he already approached Rav Imnuna. Omel Rav Imnuna, Mastisini. Oh, you have a question now about Hekdesh, potential ownership? I have a Mishnah that can help you. Now we have to pause a little bit, stop and listen to my tiny, cutesy introduction, because we're going to have two mitzvahs to do with animals here, which we have the introduction clear. A lot of uh, problems will be resolved later. Mitzvah number one is Bechor. We all know the different types of Bechors go to the Koyen, Bechor Odom, Pidin Aben, and you have Bechor Behema, the Hoyro, the cow, the sheep, that go straight to the Koyen, right? Now, what happens when you have a Peter Chamo? It's the firstborn of the Chamo of the donkey. So then the donkey is the only Chayat Mea that has Matnus Tuna applying to it, right? Because they help the Schlepp stuff out of Mitzrayim. Now, the chamor itself, you don't give the coin. What do you do, the firstborn chamor? You actually give him a se instead. It says a sheep, a lamb, yeah? A lamb from Mary. Mary had a little lamb. And that lamb you give to the coin instead of the chamor. If you don't give the lamb to the coin, then you have to behead the chamor. And you're not allowed to use it. Why? You're mafsi the coin. You're not allowed to use the chamor. 
it's kill, it's kodesh, don't use it unless you gave its value or mamish value, you transfer the kedush of the chamor to who? To the se, to the sheep. The sheep goes to the koyin. Now, it's only, it's important to remember each and every detail telling you, now that se, that sheep that goes to the hands of the koyin is not kodesh. I mean, in other words, if that koyin wants to eat that se for barbecue, nice barbecue quick before the nine days, and what? And he wants to invite his Israeli friends, Israeli, he can do that. In other words, a se is not Kodesh like, like Truma. Truma, we're not allowed to eat. Truma is Kodesh. A se is Chulin, Chulin Beat Kohen. So again, okay, so we have a born, uh, uh, a firstborn Chamor. The Kedusha goes over to the se, and it has to. Otherwise, you can't use the Chamor. You transfer it to the se, and then the se goes to the Kohen, and the Kohen can use it whichever way he wants, and also invite the Israeli as well. So far, so good. The other mitzvah is the mitzvah of Maeser Behema. We'll discuss it later. Now, listen to the following story, and you see what it has to do with us. Says of Imnuna, quoting a Mishnah. Sofek Bechoyrois. Sofek Bechoyrois. You stand there absolutely dumbfounded. You don't know if the Bechor is the Bechor or not. It could be for a child or a Chamor or a kosher animal. Let's say an animal had a miscarriage. And that miscarriage, we don't know if what came out in the early, early miscarriage was a real baby or not. So the second one, after that, is a Suffolk Bechor, because we don't know if the first thing that she gave us was a real baby, and Mr. Bechor is really not really Bechor, is the second one. Or do we say he's really the first one, because the first one was like, you know, some bunch of, you know, blood and nothing. So now you have a Suffolk Bechor, or Echad Bechor Odom, whether it's a Bechor ben Odom, Echad Bechor Behema, or the Behema, Ben Tehoirim Ben Tmein, whether Tor or Tome, I would like to focus on the Tome because that's the one which we're going to talk about uh, from now on. You have a Sofek Chamor, yeah, which we don't know whether it's a Bechor or not a Bechor. Amoitzim Chaveroi Olov Horaya. What does that mean? Here, Amoitzim Chaveroi is not so simple. Listen to me, please. And the story is like this. You had a Sofek Chamor we know it's a chamor, it's quite evident, yeah, long ears, but we don't know if it's a b'chor or not a b'chor. Sofik, Sofik Doraisa. So now, I don't want to play games. I cannot use this chamor. Doraisa, I'm not allowed to, right? Sofik Doraisa Luchumra, beautiful, absolutely sad. And therefore, I transfer the Sofik Dusha to a se. Now that se is Sofik Kodosh, Sofik not Kodosh. And that set is, I repeat it all the time, I'm sorry, it's annoying, Sofik to be given to the coin, Sofik not to be given to the coin. You know what they do? First of all, to transfer the Kedusha from the Chamor to the set, I have to, because otherwise I cannot use the Chamor. I need to use the Chamor. I need to work with it. I have a field to plow. I don't have money for a tractor and a combine. I need the Chamor. I, I got rid of the main problem. The Chamor is not Kodesh. The set is Sofik Kodesh. Do I have to give that set to coin? Yes or no? Everybody here is amazing, and Shlomo did the, the final punchline. The Shkoyen is a Motsim Chaval of Araya. In other words, I, that say, maybe Kodesh, so maybe belongs to you, Mr. Khan, Khanim, and Khanovich, as you like, maybe not. Therefore, I'll keep it. I can keep it? Yes, I can. Because as I told you before, a say, as opposed to Turuma, right, or Kochim, a say something Israel is allowed to use. I can actually take that say, shecht it, and have a very nice barbecue with the seam above Metzia. Okay, wait a second. A moitzim mechabel of Araya, though, is a double-edged sword. Why? Let's say the koyen will chop it. The koyen will catch it and say, you know, I was, I was also in Cheder and Kippur. You don't remember me? I, I also know about moitzim mechabel of Araya. Now, you, a moitzim mechabel of Araya for me. Okay, let's... What? No. Why is it a No. Alatzad that it's mine, it's not Gzela. Alatzad that it's mine, it's not Gzela. It was mine all along. Prove it. When you prove it to me, Be'edim, that, I mean, I hear what you're asking. Said, uh, you mean, was Muchzak Be'im chronologically first? I have to get back to my feet to answer that, or I have a feeling about the answer, but, you know, it's complicated without it. Lemaisa, what we hold now is, Amoetzi Mechav Rai works both ways. As long as Israel holds the, the, the Behema, which, by the way, by the way, the behema, if the behema is poor, right from birth, it belongs to the Shevet Kohanim and not to him. So Sofik Zel is also in Israel. Because <laughs> if it belongs to the Kohen, then you're holding something that never was yours. 
It's like my behemoth gave birth in your cow shed. It's not yours, if we know it's not. What? Like a zika to come all along. Very good. Oh, so now we say, now the Tanya law, and listen to what it says. Asurim begizo ba'avoido. Oh, wow, wow, wow. It says, all of a sudden, what does it say? It says that, no, I'm not allowed to actually, I have to treat it like it's Kaddish. Interesting. In other words, that Bukhor, we don't say like we said before. We say that that Bukhor, I'm not allowed to giza, to shear it, shear, shear, shear the wool, and I'm not allowed to work with it. I do have to treat it with Kedusha. Maybe I'm allowed to eat it because Kochim, whatever, that's another Shaila, but I definitely have to treat it with Kedusha. Why do we have to treat it with Kedusha? The ho ho the Oma, over here we say, talk for Koyen, ain't what sin ois for me, Yodoy, as I just told you before. If the coin will be the one who grabs it for me, he'll be now laughing all the way, saying, I'm now using what? Uh, we have a questionable item. Whoever holds it first is now holding it. Now you are out of the circle and you have to prove that it's yours. The Ketania Moitzim Mechavalavaraya. It says Moitzim Mechavalavaraya. It works both ways, honey. Moitzim Mechavaraya worked what? When he was born by you, you said, you, you stuck out your tongue to me and you said, I'm eating the seh because you are the Moitzim Mechavaraya, Mr. Cohen. Mr. Cohen can do the same. He can grab it and say, now you're the Israel, you're the Moitzim Mechavaraya, and I'll shecht it and I'll take it. If so, Bechiloi Tokfoy, let's not get confused. Remember what I told you all the time? If the person can grab it, it means what? That he has potential ownership. Ah, Shlomo was right. When the Seh is born already, and that answers you also, when the Seh or the Chamor, anybody is in the Rishus of who? Of Mr. Israel, since any sunny day at any given moment, the coin may grab it, right? And the coin will be right. Meaning Rav Himnuna here believes, Rav Himnuna says what? that we say that whoever grabs it, keeps it. He holds that. Mimela, we say, Asurin begizo ba'avoido. Why do I have to treat it with Kedusha? Why do I have to treat it with Kedusha? You know why? Because the coin has a hand in it. Because the coin anytime in the future can come and do what? And grab it, which reflect on the present. The potential shows that already now he has parts in it. If Tzvi and I are fighting over your beautiful pen, and, and everybody knows it, and it's a court case. And if we pass, and if I grab it, you'll be the mighty, you'll dancing outside the circle, and I'll be the holder. Mm -hmm. That means already now, before grabbing it, I have shares in your pen. And, and therefore, leave that aside a second, well, one second. And, and therefore, here too, we say the same thing, says Rabbi Nuna. Because if the coin takes it, it will be kept by him. Mimela already now, it has Kedusha. Mimele already now we say, Mr. Israel, you may keep it. Maybe you'll be able to do some things with it, but you have to treat it with Kedusha. You can't share it, it's like holy, and you can't work with it in the field because it's holy. So now you see what? That if the person is similarly over here by the Masusa, similarly by the bathhouse case, same thing. Because any person would be able to grab it, to lock the doors of the swimming pool on all eight sides and bring all his friends to the swimming pool and put a big sign, this pool belongs to Ruven. And then, true, Shimra will be on the outside begging for aid. Mimela, Ruven is also, before doing that physical act, he will be able to be Makdish, just like the cleanse potential ownership means that the Kedusha applies now. What do you want to say now? Yeah. Oh, 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 that's Rabbi Mnuna. Beautiful. My Kitabav teacher was wrong. It's easy. If it's quick, fine. Otherwise, what? Say what again? That my Kitabav teacher was wrong that you don't hear that again. You heard a lot of my childhood traumas. No, Shlomo said that it's comparable to the other case of uh, Hekdish Bepem, Yeros Legavaya. Hekdish is as strong as, uh, as a Maisa. Yes. I'm listening to your question. Yosef is asking, if you're still holding it, there's no Kedusha? Says the Gemara, no. Although the Israel is holding it, but because any coin can't, we have a Sophic, right? It's 50% B'chor, yes. It happens to be held by you because it was born by you. You have an unfair advantage, Mr. Israel. I'm the coin's lawyer now. Any, any given moment, my client, Mr. Kahana, may grab the sheep or the Chamorda, whatever, yes. 
and we will pass on them that it will be his unless known otherwise. Yes, Mimele already now before the coin did it, or even if you'll never do it, the, the ownership of the coin is Kilo infiltrated already in from the beginning. The potential ownership already applies now. Mimele may be yours, but cautious because you have to treat it with already now. That's what we say. And it is Kodesh because the potential has shares in it. Kilo has the potential ownership of grabbing it. I, I'm not doing tests. I saw some tests the same. I'm... Let's wait for that. Let, let's stay with that. No, no, I'm saying the sugya really needs, I'm not saying it's hard, but just it's fair. We have to have piece by piece. It's one of the sugyas, every piece you need to know. Then the next piece is much easier. He will never be able to prove that. So, to prove it. so what? But prove <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> the current can grab and say, you prove that it's not a core. It's a 50 50. Sorry, my name is Cohen. I'm grabbing your sheep, who says it's yours anyways. And you prove that it was not a poor. <laughs> Same thing. Why? Oh, in Khinami. If they bring Adim, they bring a veterinar that shows that the firstborn was yes or no. In Khinami. That would be Adim. Better. Big, bring two vets, two veterinars. And better. That didn't happen. As long as that didn't happen, we're playing the cruel game of Matsum Khamer. In Khinami. He didn't yet happen. Omali Rabba. Good. Next stage, now Rabbi comes to disprove Rabbi Nuna. Before, before Rabbi, before Rabbi, I want everybody in the room to tell me, or at least some of you should tell me, what is the very clear difference between Kedusha of Bukho and Kedusha of any other Korban? Oila, Shlomim, Chatas, Oila, any. What's the difference of the, how, do you, how does an Oila, Shlomim, Toyota begins its life, and how does a Bukho bring, begins its life, Kedusha-wise? I'm having a say. Oh, Kedusha Mereche and Shlomo, your wife needs to get a note. Very nice. Every other animal in the world that's a Kodosh wasn't born Kodosh. I have a regular lamb jumping around. All of a sudden, he came back from Chutz Laaretz. I want to bring you Korban Toido, right? Or I turn on the lights on Shabbos. I want to bring you Chatos. One sunny morning, I stand and I say, this Korban is, this animal is a Korban. Bucho is Kodosh Merechem. Bucho, nobody's really asking me. Bucho, once born as a Bucho, it's automatically Kodosh. Now, if there is a mitzvah, the rise of the Rabbanan, to declare Kedusha and say it, but I'm sorry to be able about it, it's a formality. It's Kodesh anyways. <laughs> Once born as the firstborn, it's Kodesh Becholoifen. Aye. That breaks Rabbi Menuna's proof according to Rabba. Omar le Rabba says Rabba to him, what? Kedusha's Bechol Ka'omat? Are you serious? Are you comparing our case of human Hekdesh to divine Hekdesh? You compare Kedusha's Bechol, which is automatically once born or before born, Merechem, from the womb, you're comparing it to our case? Ma kesher. Lo'olam emelach, now Rabbi argues on two things. Lo'olam emelach, first of all, talk for Kod Mutsino, it's a miyodoy, First of all, says Rabbi, against Rabbi Menuna, no. If the coin will grab it, I'll take it out of his hands. If there's money in dispute, disputable money, then if somebody grabbed it, we say, uh-oh, Mr. Coin, give it back to the original Israel. Why? We're going to explain why later. But basically, Rabbi Minuna says, if somebody attacks and charges, it stays by him. Rabbi says, no, you give it back to the Israel. And nevertheless, the reason why the Oster begins about Boida, the coin has no, big red letters, has no potential ownership here. Unless you'll prove with Adim, if two veterinars come, the Seder. But as long as no, we believe in Moetzim Chalvaraya, not as a children's game, you go out of the circle into the circle. No, we believe in Moetzim Chalvaraya one way. The one who holds it will keep holding it, and you can't grab it from him like in the jungle. That's what I first disagree with you. I, if the coin has no potential ownership, why is it that the Israel can should treat the Seh? The Kedusha? The Kedusha Ba'amela shiny. It's a Kedusha which is automatic, of course. In other words, it's not because of the reason why he hesitated with Kedusha, what did you say to me before? I think an overrule called the guy who has the Sophic Dukhar in his herd, he's a religious person, and therefore what? He has a Sophic Dukhar, which is if it's a Dukhar, it's automatically a Dukhar, cannot be treated otherwise, and that's why he treats it with Kedusha, but it has nothing to do with the ownership of the Koyen, Ma Kesher. It's not because the Koyen has potential, Shmotential. First of all, the Koyen has no potential. 
Secondly, Rabbi says, says Rashi, extending Rabbi, even if the coin would have potential, that's not what causes the, 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 the caution here. We're cautious because, yeah, would you eat a Suffolk Chazir? Then it's money go up north to a restaurant, to Suffolk Badat, Suffolk Heksher of the Arab. I don't think anybody here would enter the restaurant. Suffolk the Raisa, that's why. Since born, once born, that Suffolk Bukhor has a question mark to toot onto it, so to speak, yeah? That's why you don't treat it, otherwise you have to treat Bektusha. But it has nothing to do with the potential ownership of the coin, which by the way, I rather hold the potential, the coin has no potential to do Sha. Guys, we came out to a very, very big, big, large, amazing, big machloikas, which we really don't have time, we started late today. And that is, the challenge is like this. It's not only about Koyanim, the, the main process, by the way, is the second process. Yeah, it's not only Koyanim, it's not only animals that can apply today, 2022, in any basin. Let's say there's a case in dispute, such as like the Mesuta, the bathhouse, or the Talis that they're grabbing. In these cases, can happen today too. And I once learned in the, in the chorus, people, people come to Basin with the most amazing, weird tightness. Let's say there's a case in dispute and one person grabs, yeah, in Shashayla, there's a question. According to Ravim Nuna, you leave it by him, you leave it by him and the other guy becomes Moitz Mechaveron. According to Rabba, no. According to Rabba, yeah, you can't just take it. You have to take it back to the original person and the Moitz Mechaveron Raya would always stay with the original Machzik. He would keep the Chazok all along. A little bit of Lomdes, I want to tell you. A little bit of Lomdes. It's my, it's my, it's my turn now to say something. <laughs> to, ask, to, to, to make an extra comment, which I wouldn't make in a year. But I know, guys, you're holding very nice in the sugya. You know what's the Lomdes? One potential way to explain the mechloikas between Rabbi Moon and Rabbi is as follows. Yeah? There's always a shaila when a person is machzik something, a motzim raya. Why do we say motzim raya? Let's, let's think smarter than Mackenzie. One way of understanding it is, it's a hanhaga. Hanhaga, meaning we behave that way. In other words, let's sleep in God's line. As long as the phone is by me, unless you bring Adim, why should we change things as they are? It's called in English and in Hebrew, status quo. Leave it like that, okay? The other side is no. If I come to call with this phone every day, it's a different type of local option. If I hold the phone, we assume it's a proof that it's mine. It's a proof that it's mine, yeah? I'm not just acting that way. I'm learning deeply in my mind if he has a pen every day, Tzvi and Arakiva, that shows statistically, logically, it's like I have, I wouldn't say Eidus, it's like a proof that the pen belongs to Tzvi. You get the two, it's not in this, it's long, this, long, this. You guys are in front of each now, okay? Again, when Tzvi has the pen and I start screaming like crazy, the pen is mine, why don't you listen to me? I, I'm a nice guy. Either because we just said, listen, Akiva, you're a nice guy, but if the pen was always there, let's keep it that way, unless you rock the boat with Adim, right? The other side is saying no. If Tzvi has the pen every day, that proves that it's his. Statistically, people are not going to be what they hold shows that it's them. That's an aspect. According to Rabbi Minuna, Rabbi Minuna says, listen, it's not, not a proof, it's just behavioral. It's behavioral. Mimela, if I hold it, status quo is by me. Once he grabbed it in the middle of the night, the status quo changed. Yeah, he, he, he grabbed it. Maybe not a nice guy. Lamaisa, now it's his. Now let sleeping dogs lie by him. Rabbi said, no, it's a proof. If I hold it by me, that shows that it's mine. Although by Bukhar, it's harder to say that because we don't know the Bukhar was, but it's like a deeper psat. It's acknowledged that it is. If we know it belongs to, or as if we know it belongs to the first guy, then the second guy is knowing it to take something that's really belonging to the first one. We may, if you grabbed it, we'll take it back from him. That was a moment of extra depth. Either you got it or you didn't. You can listen to it later on in the, in the video. We have to continue. I'm sorry, we have to, because tomorrow is my, tomorrow not going to be here. You know, Ruben, Rav Ruben will be here. So <laughs> I promised him a few more lines. Omelar of Hanani, Rabba. Now of Hanania wants to bring a proof endorsement to Rabba. Tanya, the line starts with the word Tanya. Tanya de Messiah Rabba, you make sense. What did Rabba say? Rabba said that if the Koyen grabs it, then we take it away from the Koyen, okay? Which means what? A case of Sophic Bcho, if a Sophic Bcho was born by me and I'm a regular Israel, he is not, then Yosef is right. The Koyen is not, doesn't have one iota one molecule owned, owned by him. Because even if he will grab it, we'll take it back to this role. The coin is zero ownership. And I'll prove it to you, I'll prove like you, I'm helping you from the following price. It says like this, 
As fakus nichnosim ladir lis aser. I promised you there'll be another mitzvah you're connected to animals. We all know about Maisa Behema. What's Maisa Behema? Every tenth animal, they go out of the, you know, like in Rosh Hashanah, Hashem does it to us, yeah? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Boom, with the red scarlet thing. What happens to the tenth one? The soil brings it as a korban. Is the tenth animal, the Maisa Behema, does it go to the Koyan? No. Common mistake, which we spoke about in Bovekama, Kuf, Yud, Amud Beis. And what do we say? No. It goes as a korban. The Israel brings a korban every tenth sheep. So far, so good. What happens when you mix the two sugiyas? Listen to this. A spekos, you know spekos? Sofik of b'chor. Ah. Remember Mr. Sheep? Mr. Sheep has sofik, kedushavu, of the petah I have now an animal jumping around, and it's a sofik b'chor, a sofik dushav b'chor, and I bring it together to the pen, to where the animals live, the deal, the, the, where the sheep are, to the enclosure, and together with the other animals, I have 10 animals here. And one of those animals is actually possibly belong, is what? Is a suffix. No, it's one suffix. One suffix. One suffix. One suffix. One suffix. Suffix bchor, suffix not bchor. I have nine regular animals who are chulin, and one of them is a suffix bchor. And I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, slash, boom. And the tenth one goes. And I fulfill, listen carefully, my chiyuv to bring a korban, I fulfill potentially with what? With an animal belonging to, maybe, the coin. Ooh. If you want to tell me that the sofek b'chor maybe belongs to the coin because if the coin grabs it, I don't take it out of him, which means that now the coin has kilo 50% in it, the coin has parts in it, then am I nichnos in the deal? What a chutzpah do you have to use? How do you, how can you put him in the deal and do what? Nim tzazeh Imagine yourself, I, what? I, uh, I owe Ellen a hundred shekels. I'll take hundred shekels from you, from Perry. You're all British, okay? I'll take hundred shekels from you without permission and pay you my debts. What a nice guy. Chutzpah. That's what you're doing over here, mechutzpah. If really we say, not like Rabbah, we try to prove Rabbah is right. Had we said, not like Rabbah, had we said what? Had we said that really a Sophic Bukhar jumping around here is really put financially, money, guilt, belongs 50% potentially to the client, because if he grabs you, don't take out, how can I bring that as my Corban? It may be belonging to who? To the client. What? Must be. Elamai must be. But no, that the Sophic is not a real Sophic. The suffix b'chor is never really belonging to the coin, because even if he'll grab it, we'll grab it back from him, which means it's a suffix on the kedusha, but not a financial suffix on the ownership. The ownership is 100% mine, the Israel. That's why I can use it to be my korban meiser. That's a proof to prove Rabbi right. Omar Abaye, one more, one more, one more. Omar Abaye says Abaye, no, oh, he Abaye is now killing that proof. Says Abai, Ini Shumho, that I believe Rabbi is right, but that Lotus Ayelamar, that is not a helpful statement, Lemar, which means to Rabbi. Rabbi is our master. And that point we made about what? About the, the fact that you can't use the coin's money for your own Corban Meister, that's not a proof to say that Rabbi is right and talk for coin Mutsin. Why? He's you know the stories over here. The story is you don't have 100 animals. You have nine regular animals, and him, who's him? The Sophic. Now, it's not called that I pattered myself with someone else's money. Listen to the Bible's genius. The man of Shach, either or, whichever way you look at it, Mr. Owner of the 10 sheep is a good kosher guy. If really all 10 animals are chulin, only two options here, very cruel. If all 10 animals are chulin, and Mr. Sofik Bukhor is not a Bukhor, then we have regular 10 animals, all belonging to me, Mr. Regular Owner. Of course, I can take my sir for mine, it's all mine. He loves Bar And if we don't have, if the 10th one is not Chiyuv Maiser, because it belongs to the Koyen, may yes belong to the Koyen, Tisha love Bar Then I only have nine, I don't have 10, then I don't have a Chiyuv Maiser at all. 
then the tenth animal I gave is kind of gift to base of Nikdas. Get it? Mimela, <laughs> Mimela says, Abai, I dragged the, the, the drug under your feet, right? Again, it's beautiful. Abai. Yeah, right? Uh, okay. So, Hadar, Hadar Abai is for a Bruven. Hotel of Bruven, I'm holding in Hadar Omar Abai, and he'll do the trick. And see you tomorrow. I'm um, see him tomorrow. Bezos Hashem. And thank you very much. And we, we're doing talks with Koyan, such a famous sugya. Everyone should be very happy about it. Thank you very much.